guys, this is Alala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. So, let's jump right back in. Now, I have a question. Why did you use your money on that man? You knew nothing about him. Did you do it for him? For yourself? Or for me, perhaps? Rumple grins at me mischievously. Even with the tired eyes, I can still see the bright cheer in them. Hit the nail right on the head. Again. You're becoming easier to read, my sweet princess. Well, no matter why you did it, thank you. That medicine was necessary to help that man. I still think you should have accepted money from him. You helped him and did him a service no one else would. You should have accepted his gratitude. Princess, I told you. I cross my arms and frown at him. You're so stubborn. Rumpel's smile falters, and he just looks at me sadly, almost guiltily. For some reason, the sight of him in such a state makes my heart sink. Wipe off that frown! You look better with a smile! Rumpel stares at me, shocked. Why is he staring at me like that? You like my smile? What? I did not say I... You like my smile, and you complimented it too. Princess, you have no idea how much this means to me. Rumpel throws his hands in the air. I, I resist the urge to roll my eyes at the exaggerated reaction. You get compliments all the time from women. Yes, but none as honest as yours. That compliment is valuable because I know you absolutely me or meant it. So I will keep those words close to my heart, because they are precious to me. It wasn't anything like the spectacular com or compliments he gives, yet he still looks so happy. You two seem to be getting along. Parfait appears behind us with a smile on her face. Sorry to interrupt, but Melody, Karma is slowly drowning in table work. Would you help him? Yes, of course. Rumpel looks disappointed as I am sent back to the bar where Karma expresses immediate relief that I am back. Rumpel retires to his room early that day, and he is given the day off. Both Delora and Parfait can see the tiredness on his face just like I can. He does not reappear for, uh, for the rest of the day. At the end of my shift, I retire to my room. When I get downstairs the next morning, I am met with a familiar sight. Both Karma and Rumpel stand on opposite sides of a table, their voices rising in argument. They are fighting again? I happen to catch their words as I walk quietly down the stairs. Who are you to criticize my work ethic when you were gone for several days leaving me with your workload? It wasn't like I wanted to, and who are you to criticize how I work? All of the ladies I spoke to said that you shower them with compliments. What kind of professional behavior is that? I'm having a hard time believing you're a professional with the way that you flaunt yourself. At least I don't flirt with people to attract their attention. And you flirt with them and don't even realize the effect it has on other people. Flattery is not a crime. Just yesterday, the princess came to see you in your room, all because you gave her the impression that you liked her. Were you actually spying on her and you call me uncouth? No, I overheard her say it. And you're wrong. I never say anything if it isn't truthful. Ah, oh, well, then the, mo or then the truth of the matter is that you must be in love with many women. Because they all seem to think that you'll get down on one knee and propose to them. You say some sly things, Miss Karma, and yet you're the biggest liar of us all. At least I don't lie to my partner. We're going to defend Rumple. Rumpel tells me that he never lies. He tells me that he wants me to trust him. Though I still find it hard to believe, I do want to trust him. I walk down the rest of the stairs and stop at Rumpel's side. Both men look equally surprised to see me there. Rumpel has never lied to me yet. Karma looks up and stares at me a few moments, looking startled by my sudden appearance. Then he sighs. Princess, a man that flatters everyone doesn't flatter anyone. At least he's not so conceited that he flatters himself constantly. Such a sharp tongue you have, princess. And you are very quick to jump to assumptions. Are you two at it again? 
Jurian stops at the table and frowns at them. Both men glance away from her cold gaze. Karma murmurs something before excusing himself. Rumpel looks down at the table, his eyebrows knit together with frustration. What is wrong with you two? Why can't you just be civil with each other? Jurian, you're never here to see how these fights start. Karma is every bit a beast, attacking me for no good reason at all. But with your keen eye, you should be able to discern that, right? Flattery won't work on me, Rumble, and second, I doubt these fights start without any bit of prompting from you. I swear I don't do anything. Karma is just always irritable. He's like a woman during that one time of the month. Jurian walks away stiffly, leaving me with Rumple. I look at him, a little irritated by his er earlier comment. He gives me a sheepish uh, smile. Thank you, princess. For what? For defending me. I swear I meant what I said. I would never lie to you. I mean, every one of my compliments, every one of my thank yous. You must know that since you came to defend me. Rumple, sometimes you continue talking when nothing needs to be said. But I am just expressing the depths of my gratitude. It is not necessary. It was such a small thing, too. Princess, can you give me some help with inventory? I, <clears throat> I am coming. As I turn away, Rumple waves. I'll see you later, princess, and who knows, you might get your second good deed. I resist the urge to roll my eyes. It feels like it will be a while yet before I can achieve my next good deed. Chapter 6, Strings of Fate What a brilliant day! The sun is shining, the town is full of laughter, and I have my sweet princess here to accompany me. It sounds like I am getting easier to read, too. No, you've just said it enough times that I memorized it. That means you must pay attention to my words. That in itself is a compliment, princess. It is not. We are on our way to the usual store to restock our medications when a small figure leaves out through the front door. She stares at us with a lost look on her face. Rumpler reacts immediately, making his way over to her with a broad smile. Madame, I can't help but notice the pained expression upon your beautiful face. Is there anything I can do to, as er, to assuage your worries? For seeing your lovely face shadowed by such sadness stabs me right in the heart. The woman stares at Rumple, dumbfounded. His smile wavers and she takes a step back, sudden, er, and he takes a step back, suddenly looking alarmed. Oh, I'm sorry. It's you! Huh? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I... Um, this is awkward, madame, but I'm afraid I don't know you. What? Or do I? Do I know you? I take a step forward and look at the woman flatly. He has been cursed. He has amnesia. Amnesia? The woman stares at Rumpel, scrutinizing him. You do seem different. Changed from before, in any case. So you knew me before. How terrible is it of me to forget such a lovely face? But perhaps you could help me remember. The usual flirty suggestion is in his voice, but the woman seems unaffected. I can. I can help you remember. You, you can. It's no wonder I can't remember your name. You have the fairy tale curse, don't you? Who is this woman? You truly don't remember me? I... I'm sorry. The woman looks conflicted, but the expression is gone as fast as it appears. I'm Bria, your fiancé. What? The shock is apparent on my face, but nowhere near as impressive as the astonishment on Rumpel's face. My fiancé? She has to be lying. How can Rumpel possibly have a fiancé with the way that he is? He is barely able to dedicate himself to a single woman for an hour. Bria takes a step forward and takes Rumpel's hands in her own. You don't remember holding my hands like this when you took me to the forest and proposed to me? 
Rumpel opens his mouth, but no words escape. He reminds me of a lost dog all of a sudden, with his eyes so wide. Bria runs her fingers over his hands. I loved you, and you loved me, and I still love you very much. I, I don't remember this. How can I help you remember? Rumpel's voice is faint, but he, er, but still he tries to smile. Ah, uh, the circumstances of the curse tell me that I need to remember through memories and um, a journal somehow. A journal? I have your old journals. I can show you the very first love letter you wrote to me. Bria starts walking, her hands still clasped in rumples. I stare at them for a few moments, trying to piece together what is happening in my head. I chase after them. Bria enters a house, one that Rumpel stares at in awe. When she comes back out, she is holding a journal. She hands it to Rumpel, then opens up to the first page. This is a little embarrassing, but there it is. You compiled your letters into a journal. Rumpel slowly reads over the words, and I notice the strange, glazed look come back to his eyes, and his expression grows somewhat er, grows more somber. This is like the last time, when he remembered that he was a doctor. Bria turns to me as Rumpel is reading her and her eyebrows arch. And who are you? His partner. Partner? We are helping each other with our curses. Oh, you're cursed too, you poor thing. Bria's voice is flat. She is glaring at me beneath her smile. I have done nothing to merit or this distrust from her. And I cannot bring myself to trust her either. Bria. Rumpel looks up from the journal and stares at her. Yes, sweet? Rumpel's melancholy expression throws me off. Last time he was so excited when he realized he was a doctor, but now his expression is heartbreaking. I remember I did propose to you. In the, for or in the forest, when it was dark, I... You set up little lights around the clearing. We spoke for a while, and then you got down on your knee. You dropped the ring. It had fallen in the roots of some tree. We only noticed it when a bird came down to pluck it out of the bramble. I had no idea of what you were looking for, but I still chased after the bird. And you got the ring back, and you knew. Bria holds out her hand, and I notice a beautiful red-green gem ring on her, fing on her ring finger. It was still charming, though. I laughed for so long because it felt so memorable. Plucking your engagement ring out of a bird's beak. Y you're right. Rumpel smiles a little uncertainly. In that moment, I feel him turn away from me. He does not even realize I am there, standing with Bria. Why am I feeling so uncomfortable? You said you were helping Rumpel with his curse, yes? She turns to me. There is no worry. I can help him now. This is what couples do. I have to force the pity out of my heart. I have to force myself to think rationally. Something still feel seems off about this. But Rumpel remembers. Which means this is the truth, isn't it? But I am still his partner. I still feel something is wrong. I do not trust this woman. Do you know anything about him, dear? Have you helped him regain any of his memories? She was with me when I regained my memories. Melody is a very valuable good luck charm. Rumple flashes a small smile at me before turning to Bria. Her eyes seem a lot colder now. Tell me, what do you go by now? Until we figure out your name, I need something to call you. Rumple. Bria's cold gaze falls on me, and I can sense something in them that surprises me. Jealousy? Why would she be jealous of me? Rumpel, would you maybe want to come back home with me? What? I know you must be overwhelmed, but our home might be able to help you remember some things. I'm... I'm sorry. I actually have a patient somewhere else that I need to tend to. Bria's eyes flash briefly. Her frown is there for a few seconds before she smiles again. You always were good with your patients. I'm sorry. It's okay. I understand that you're overwhelmed. But remember, now I am here for you too. I want to mend things, to make them go back to what they were before. How about you look over that journal and then we meet up again tomorrow? We could take this one step at a time. I would like that. 
We can get to know each other again, and in time, I'm sure you'll remember what we used to have. I, or I loved you, and I did too. I still do. A slight shiver runs down my spine as I stare at the two of them. There is that uncomfortable feeling once again. Bria and Rumpel agree on a spot to meet tomorrow, and then she leans up to kiss Rumpel on the cheek. She puts a hand on his cheek as she walks off with the gentle or with a gentle smile on her face. Are you okay? He looks at me for a few moments. I feel that the or that his gaze lingers longer than it normally does on my own eyes. Then he smiles and laughs. Of course I am, princess. I just remembered something about my own past. I'm guessing that the second entry has appeared in my journal by now. I can't wait to get back to the march and read it. Bria has the rest of my journals, so I might truly be able to remember everything if I talk to her. Including your love for her. He sighs out before he proclaims that we should finish our errands. I follow him around town, though the scenery lacks its usual vibrancy. Rumpel doesn't speak to anyone, not even the girls, while we walk. He keeps his eyes focused on the ground, and when... And when he speaks to the shop owners, his cheer is lukewarm at best. I try to start a conversation with him many times, but he shies away from talking. I feel like there is something he is not telling me. When we arrive at the margin, Rumble quickly excuses himself, not even sharing his epiphany about his past with anyone. What has him so bent out of shape? He just regained another memory. I am assuming he's going to go read it about or read about it now. It is not like him to hide things. I hope Rumpel is okay. Ooh, there's something there's something going on with that lady. It has been about a week since Rumpel regained his last memory. He has be or he has been meeting with Bria since then. But he still hasn't told me about the memory from the journal. He does not flirt with any girls, and when he sees me, his smile looks broken. He spends his days visiting Bria and tending to Parfait. You're worried about Rumpel, aren't you? Why would I be worried about him? Because Rumpel is no longer able to run errands with me, Waltz decided to take his place. But Waltz's presence cannot make up for Rumpel's absence. He'll be fine, princess. He's still figuring things out. I do not trust that woman! His fiance, She appeared out of nowhere. People who aren't cursed can't find the tavern princess. She would never have been able to find him. So really, the only place she could have met him was out here in nowhere. I could tell that he is teasing me, but it does little to lift my spirits. I know. Walt sighs. If you don't trust her, why not just ask around for her? She obviously does not want to talk to me. No, I mean, asking others about her. So long as you find a way to phrase your intentions honestly, I think they might understand you. Rumpel says my honesty is good, but I also know that the way I speak frustrates many people. Come on, I'll help. Waltz approaches a flower shop where several people are gathered to look at the fresh flowers. Excuse me, madam, sir. I was wondering if you knew anything about someone named Bria. We hear that she's engaged to a friend of ours, but he hasn't said much about her. Everyone calls me blunt, but I would never question others so openly. Does Walt really expect the people to be so open to him? Oh, if it isn't Walt doing a little investigative work, are you? Just looking to find out more about someone important to a friend. Not going to put this into one of your shows, are you? Walt raises an eyebrow and laughs. Of course not. Everyone just trusts Waltz. I suppose he must speak to people often being a performer. They would probably never suspect Waltz to do anything morally questionable. And yet with me, they were suspicious of everything I did. I guess it is a good thing that Waltz is here. I stifle a sigh as the so-called investigation begins. But Bria, hmm? I was under the impression that her fiancé wasn't seeing her anymore. Bria, oh poor Bria, I hear that the poor dear made a mistake and that her fiancé threw her out for it. Is she engaged to someone new now? I'm not surprised given the affair that she had on her first fiancé. Excuse me, what did you just say? Oh, you weren't aware? I'm terribly sorry, perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. You said she cheated on her first fiancé. 
She was engaged to some man, a doctor, I believe. He was a good man, always smiled, helped everyone, including the poor. I don't see how she would have, or she would have the gall to do it, but the rumors state that she was seeing another man. I think I saw them out together sometimes. He was a rich businessman. Who was he? I believe he was one of the doctor's patients. Did anyone see this, or this for sure, ma'am? Oh, lots of people did. That's why the poor man stopped seeing her, bless his heart. He looked heartbroken. But then the two of them were engaged, so she should have been more committed to him. When Bria first approached Rumpel, she had no idea he had amnesia. She started apologizing to him. Was it for that affair, or am I just speculating? But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!